Hey, it's Jazz at Red Panda Reads, and today I have a little bank holiday weekend reading vlog for you guys. I actually forgot to film the introduction, so now it is Tuesday evening and I am due to start work again tomorrow morning, and I have already filmed all of this vlog and read a number of different books, but I thought I'd quickly rewind a little bit, go back in time, and show you guys what I have on my pile of possibilities for this bank holiday weekend. I'm not going to give anything away yet, but we'll just have like a little mini book haul to start off this vlog. So first of all, I recently picked up Hamnet because I'd heard lots of positive things about it and it did win the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2020. So I was excited to see what all the fuss was about. Number two, we have... I'm so excited about these. So we have Heartstopper Volume 3 and Volume 4. For those who have been following my channel for a while, you will know that I absolutely adored Alice Osman's first two books in this comic series. It's basically about two guys who fall in love and also acceptance and, and it's got a range of different characters and different people who are just all lovely and you want to hug them all and you come out of these books feeling like, you know, wholesome and happy and I very much feel like this series in a whole should be something that young adults and even teenagers should read and that we can just all accept everyone for who they are. So this is a poetry collection called Set Me on Fire, a poem for every feeling and it was put together by Ella Risbridger who wrote The Essex Serpent which is actually a book I have had on my TBR for a while and this book was described as a really good entry to poetry hence I picked it up. And the last book I got is Sitting Pretty by Rebecca Tulsig. So this is a non-fiction read. It is a memoir by Rebecca, who is a disability advocate and creator of the Instagram account Sitting Pretty. And it discusses kind of the complications of our current society and how people perceive disability and what it is like to be disabled in kind of the ableist world that we live in and how I believe this could be tackled. And I'm also listening to Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir on Audible um, and that is a science fiction book about a guy who wakes up on a spaceship and he doesn't know why he's there. So those are the one, two, three, four, five, six books I do or do not read over the next few days and now let's go into the vlog. I will see you at the end. Okay. I found a poem I just really liked and it's called The Orange and I'm orange so I thought this orange would share with you this orange. Um, it's called The Orange by Wendy Cope and it's a very short poem and I just thought it was lovely so I'm going to share it with you. So, at lunchtime I brought a huge orange. The size of it made us all laugh. I peeled it and shared it with Robert and Dave. They got quarters and I had a half. And that orange it made me so happy, as ordinary things often do. Just lately, the shopping, a walk in the park, this is peace and contentment, it's new. The rest of the day was quite easy. I did all the jobs on my list and enjoyed them and had some time over. I love you, I'm glad I exist. I just thought that was lovely and a beautiful poem and just filled with such happiness and kind of love of yourself and others too, which makes it really, really beautiful. Hey guys, I thought I'd do a quick check-in before I went to sleep. It is nine o'clock on a Saturday night, which means it is bedtime. I am in my pyjamas, um, but let's talk about books. So firstly, I've been listening to Project Hail Mary. And one thing I initially noticed with this book when comparing it to Andy Weir's other books is all his characters, well, main characters, seem to have really strong, determined personalities. They tend to have quite dry senses of humour and also be complete chatterboxes. And I think because in a number of these cases, those people are either by choice or due to the environment they're in, for example, waking up on a spaceship with no one else on their own. And so they have to make conversation with themselves. And as the reader, you get the brunt of that. 
Um, so in Hail Mary, we have our main character who wakes up on a spaceship and he doesn't know how he's got there or why. And so far as the story has started, he keeps on having his memories triggered and slowly we're unraveling exactly why he's ended up on this ship, the Hail Mary, and what he's doing there. And what I'm loving about it is all the use of scientific technology to solve problems. The other book I actually picked up today was Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. So this book actually won the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2020. And I've heard really positive things about it. So I've been really excited to pick this book up. It's a fiction, but it's loosely based on Shakespeare's son, Hamnet, who died when he was very young. And it explores whether that event in Shakespeare's life actually inspired his work, Hamlet. And Hamlet and Hamnet were names which were interchangeable back in Victorian. God, when, 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 when would, back in the 1500s, those names were interchangeable. And I'm assuming the reason that Maggie O'Farrell chose Hamlet and not Hamlet is it's clear it is not the play Hamlet. But at the same time, you look at it and think, is this Shakespeare? Is this Shakespeare? Why is it so similar to Shakespeare? And your mind kind of goes, ooh, this is intriguing. So I think personally, it's quite a clever name. My initial response to this book was, oh my goodness, enough with the descriptions. It was so slow. It was extremely character focused. Everything from one of our characters looking after the bees just took a million hours to say one thing. And I think that's because at the moment I'm really craving fast paced books. However, I took a break from it. I then had a look at some reviews to kind of get an idea of more where the plot was going because all I knew was that our character Hamnet is going to die in this book and that is all I knew. So I wanted to get a little bit more of an idea of what I was getting into and I am more intrigued now. You're learning a bit about Hamnet's mother and she was a really quite intriguing woman. She appears to have been really kind of feared by the local community when she was young because her mother, before she passed away, would take her into forests and she would go out barefoot. And people believed she was a really creepy, potential cursed, potentially witchy lady. And I'm really enjoying that exploration of Agnes, so the mother character. Um, and. I'm now 70 pages through, so I'm doing okay, and I'm, I'm going to give this book a chance and see where it takes me. So on that note, good night everyone. I am actually exhausted and I may read a little bit and then I'm going to go to sleep. So goodbye. <laughs> okay. That was a celebratory jump slash look at my awesome trouser thing. I have just spent the whole morning cleaning. Most of this room that I'm showing you guys is clean. The kitchen is clean, the lounge is clean. It is just the bathroom left to go, but that will be a job for tomorrow, I think. Um, Cause it's a bank holiday weekend and I have the time. So I just put some fish cakes in the oven and my plan now is to read, go for a walk, do some more reading, dance in these super fun pants that I can't. Previously, I have felt really bad and guilty about enjoying fashion and spending money on clothes. And I think there's a big thing being a woman where you always have to really look nice but you shouldn't put too much effort in. And then if you focus too much on clothes, that's kind of considered vain or your appearance. So I've always really felt guilty about kind of enjoying buying clothes. And I had a chat to my partner Rob the other day and he was like, if it's something you enjoy, you should be proud of it and enjoy dressing up and it doesn't matter. And it's just kind of a little hobby of mine to get secondhand clothing and I'm gonna be proud of that and enjoy that. Um, so that's a rant over. In terms of books, um, I am actually loving this book. I think after I read The Orange, I was completely sold. And I'm just, 
I'm just dipping in and out of it now and just I'm feeling quite emotional with it which is lovely and it's just gorgeous as well um I'm actually really enjoying Hamlet now I'm loving the main female character Agnes who is Hamlet's mum I think she is a fierce strong woman and I love that um I found the sex scene hilarious because you get it from the point of view of a hawk and yeah it kind of yeah kind of made sense how a hawk would perceive humans doing it so that made me laugh but anyway I'm gonna go and get those fish cakes and boogie my way on with the day so hi guys evening we thought we'd quickly check in and um, I am exhausted but I thought I'd let you know my thoughts on Hamlet so I'm really really enjoying it now there are bits which I'm like oh why have we changed character now it's gonna be really slow paced but then I get by the end of the chapter I'm really really absorbed and really enjoying it and there was just the most beautiful yet terrifying description of the plague that I have ever heard the way Maggie describes the flies which carried the plague moving from host to host slowly spreading it around the world to the point that x person gets infected because of these series of different events which allowed the infection to spread was just harrowing and the language she uses is so beautiful the fact she chose a glass blower in venice and a young ship boy to basically explain how one of our main characters picked up the plague miles and miles and thousands of miles away from them um yeah and that was beautiful and it also i think hit me quite hard because of the pandemic so over in the UK now basically everything is lifted like you don't even have to legally wear masks in most places which is terrifying I still do and I was really glad when I went to the shops and the first time in six weeks the other day that people mostly were wearing masks and I just think it's important to remember that although lots of people are vaccinated and lots of people for example younger people aren't as at risk of having quite severe complications there are a little lot of people who are still out there and at risk of getting complications from COVID-19 and that is terrifying so if you're umming and ahhing about wearing a mask just think it's not necessarily for you the reason you're wearing it it's for other people and I think we really need to be cautious at the moment especially with cases rising in the UK because it's scary um Another thing to note, as well as reading Hamnet today, this arrived in the post, the third instalment of the beautiful and wonderful Heartstopper. I literally think this book should be read in like, like year nines plus, how, however old that is, like 13, 14 plus should read these books because they're just such a wonderful kind hug of a story about different sexualities and mental health and it's just presented in a really wonderful way and it would be great if we could live in a world where coming out as gay or coming out as trans wasn't scary and this is what these books tackle and they're like a hug and uh, I've got the fourth one here I've, I've I already finished this one they're super quick reads because um, they're um, graphic novel styles but I've got the next one and I'm gonna read that now so on that note this is gonna be it for the day and I will see you guys tomorrow take care Go. Ah! what are you doing what are you doing Hi, I'm just going to quickly check in. Sorry I haven't been here much today. I've been playing um, video games, reading and going for walks and cleaning. Ooh, way to spend a bank holiday, eh? Um, no, it was, it was actually lovely. Um, but 
I just got to the bit in the book about two thirds through where Hamnet dies, and that's not a spoiler. It literally says in the back, ugh, literally says in the back that Hamnet will not survive the week, and it feels very much like Maggie O'Farrell has basically taken my heart, shattered it into a thousand pieces, and I'm really hoping in the last third she manages to at least put those pieces a little bit back together because it's heartbreaking and seeing the grief that the family are going through is heartbreaking and just really really sad so yeah let, 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 let's see what happens ka I am back and I want to say that I had such a fantastic few days off reading. I read some absolutely phenomenal books, a few five star reads and nothing below a four star um, and I thought I would just share with you now my final thoughts of both finally completing a vlog because I've tried to do so many and have just been so not satisfied by it or just felt really self-conscious about filming myself. I still can't really feel myself reading. I just feel like I'm being watched and I, I feel really awkward and then I don't actually read the words properly on the page and then it's like an hour's gone by and it's like, what was the point of this? Anyway, and I also wanted to reflect on the books I read. So let's start off with reflecting on the books. So I finished Hamnet this morning and oh my goodness, did she put the pieces of my heart back together? Mostly, I didn't think she was going to, but oh my goodness, this book broke me at times and was so upsetting and so beautifully done. And for just a book that was basically exploring that Shakespeare's son might have died from the plague and it might have inspired Hamlet from such kind of a simple premise where much doesn't really happen to fill up 365 pages and for me to be completely mesmerised for 250 of those, the first, the, like once I got into it was incredible and something I'd like to say about Maggie O'Farrell's writing is how she is very good at depicting emotion through imagery rather than just saying blah blah is crying something sad has happened she's very much at making the environment reflect how the characters are feeling and there's this one part that I want to read to you now which just perfectly depicted an incredibly awkward uncomfortable dinner without ever saying that as soon as you read this one like few these few sentences you knew this dinner was going to be awkward and yes the dinner ended up being incredibly awkward so let me just find it here we go so a family have just sat down at a dinner table to eat um and then this is what it says mary had beheaded one of the geese in his honor the honking and shrieking were terrible to hear, and now its carcass lies dismantled and torn between them all. Yeah, just, ah, oh, breathtakingly beautiful, breathtakingly emotive. I would highly recommend, and I gave this a 4.25 out of 5. Um, I didn't give it higher just because I found the beginning really slow, and also I think it was quite a hard book emotionally for me to read at the moment so there are a few bits that made me feel really really anxious but nevertheless it was really good and I would recommend. The next book to comment on is A Poem for Every Feeling. So I didn't actually read any more of this but I am excited to. I just was kind of drawn in by Hamlet and I couldn't put that down so this is going to be sitting on my bedside table and I'm hoping to read a couple of poems from it every night and I'm really excited for that and I'll let you know what I think when I finished. I haven't started city, Sitting Pretty yet but I will be very very soon because not only is it a beautiful book and it is orange as, as we know right now I love orange but I think it's a book that I really really need to read and that I think I'm really going to enjoy and benefit from for many different reasons. We then of course have the two Heartstoppers and I talked to you a little bit about Heartstopper Volume 3 um, but Heartstopper Volume 4 had a slightly different tone to the other books. There was a lot more focus on mental health and anorexia and it, it tackled things for example like how to approach and how to support someone who has a mental health condition and it very much said that sometimes there isn't anything you can do apart from show that you love them and you care and I thought that was incredibly poignant. It also discussed a little bit about the mental health systems. So this is set in the UK 
but it very much talked about how sometimes being uh, inpatient can be really effective but it's not effective for everyone it talked about how therapy also can be really beneficial but not always it also tackled the point that our waiting lists for certain interventions for example for support for eating disorders is ridiculously wrong and that actually can cause people to go into crisis and if we could address that and stop those waiting times and actually you know help people before they get to a time of crisis rather than just reacting to when they're really really ill that actually might help a lot of people and i think for any young people who are wondering how to support someone with mental health um disorders or they themselves think they might be struggling with mental health reading this book could be incredibly useful and as i mentioned it's all it's all comics so it's a very quick read and it's just uh, it's just it's it was just I was so impressed by it and what it talked about with mental health was incredible and I think even someone who's done a lot of work into mental health I still learned a lot from reading that book and I wish I'd read that book when I was a lot younger because I think it could have really helped in some very kind of challenging times so the last book is the one I'm listening to so Hail Mary the Hail Mary project Project Hail Mary. The Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. So I got through about another six hours this weekend. I think I have five or so hours left. And as I said, it's a science fiction book. Um, a guy is stuck on a spaceship, basically trying to save the human race by using his scientific brain and working out why these strange kind of alien-like species are absorbing all the heat from the sun and going to cause the world to come into a horrible ice age. And I'm enjoying it, I'm not hooked, I'm not like thinking I want to go for a walk just to listen it, to it, but I'm very much enjoying it. I find the character's humour is very the same throughout and it just kind of gets a little bit grating, he has to be very humorous and silly about everything and maybe that's just that's just not sitting well I'm like sometimes I'm like do you need that extra comment like does it really add anything yes you're trying to keep the character fun and dynamic but I'm a little bit bored of that and I think that's because there is really mainly one character so you don't get much variety but nevertheless I'm enjoying it and I'm looking forward to sharing with you my final thoughts of this book once I finished it all so on that note i think i'm going to check out for this weekend um and i will see you guys very very soon and take care look after yourselves and i hope you enjoyed this vlog and i hope you like the street art that i kind of took you guys around to and yeah take care everyone Bye bye